welcome back to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make this 3D paper project using a shadow box. So this is a request we get all of the time. So I'm gonna show you how to make this super sweet princess project. So let's go ahead and head on over to Cricut Design Space and cut it out. Starting off on designbundles.net, this is the file that we are using today. This is a 3D princess paper craft. So what's really cool is this is four layers. And if you layer this in a shadow box using adhesive foam squares, you can really bring this to life. Now, there's lots of different things that you could do with files like this. Um, for example, scrapbooking and things like that. Tons of different things to do with this. You could make 3D cards if you wanted to. But today we are going to be creating a shadow box. So this is the file we're using. Once again, this is only one plus credit. So if you guys are a plus member, it's only one plus credit. So what we're gonna do is download this and bring it right over to Cricut Design Space. Once you have your file over here in Cricut Design Space, there's a few things that we need to do to get it ready. Now, for example, the way that this stands, this is ready for around a four by five um, shadow box. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna change this because for, well, for me, for example, if you are sticking with the 4.5, this is actually ready to go for you. But if you are doing a five by seven, like I'm doing today, you're gonna wanna change um, the dimensions here. Now, for a project like this, this is created for um, this shape. You definitely don't want to turn this into a complete square. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So when we go to resize these individual um, as I do, I actually, let's see if I can select everything at once um, and resize them all. I think we can. So everything is selected as you guys can see here. So right now I've unselected it. So a couple ways you can do this, you can just drag and drop over it like so, make sure everything is selected by having all of your layers in, um, in gray, or you can come up here to the top and hit select all. So from here, we're going to hit this lock button. This is gonna unlock all of those layers for us, and we're gonna start to resize them out. So what I wanna do is I'm going to, since I'm doing a five by seven, I actually wanna change this to 4.75. And then for my height here, I'm going to change this to 6.75. So what I've done is I've dropped it a quarter of an inch on each side so it will fit perfectly in my shadow box. Because the shadow box has a little bit of an edge on the inside, so we need to make sure it's cut down. Now you could always trim down after the fact if you need to, um, but if you size it inside of Cricut Design Space, it's 4.75 by 6.75. Once you've resized everything, you're just gonna go ahead and lock it back, and it's gonna lock all those layers. Now I wanted to show you the reason why with designs like this, you don't wanna go in and do a square. We have lots of ones that are designed specifically for a sheer uh, square shape over on designbundles.net. But so for example, let me just show you. Say for example, I was doing an eight by eight shadow box square. You're going to see how that's going to change that size. It's going to start to really, um, you know, take it out of shape and things like that. It's going to misshape everything. So that's why we always just recommend, let me go ahead and reselect everything here. We always recommend to stick within the proportions that were created for you. You can always resize them up with really intricate pieces like this. Another tip is you really don't want to size down what the designer has already designed out for us. So we wouldn't want to go past that 4.5 because these little bitty intricate cuts, Cricut and Silhouette, as well as your other die cutting machines can only cut so tiny. That's where you're going to start to get some, you know, torn paper or miscut shapes. So always go bigger than what is designed designed. You can always cut as big as you are allowed. So let's go ahead and change this back really quick. We're going to unlock all those layers again, and I'm going to go ahead and put back in that um, 4.75 by the 6.75. All right, and then we're going to hit enter, and then I'm going to lock all those layers back. Now, you can also change the color of your layers so that way you know what paper you're cutting out. So say, for example, I wanted this layer to be pink. I would come up to my square here, and then I can just change those to whatever I would like those to be. So you can also do that as well before you cut everything out. Now, another thing that I want to point out here is our very back layer. So you see how we're going to have, um, we're going to have like a yellow here. So we're actually going to glue down another layer 
on the back side of our shadow box to create the moon and stuff. So you can either create that square right here inside of Cricut Design Space, so Cricut cuts it out, or you can cut it with a paper trimmer, which is what I'm gonna do today, just to save time, because you're gonna cut that one exactly at 5.7. So your very back layer is always going to be glued to the back of the shadow box, and it can be perfectly that 5.7. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is you can just create a shape by clicking Clicking shapes right here and then I'm gonna click on the square here and then once again I'm going to unlock it but once again this time I'm gonna do that 5.7 all right and then I would lock this back I would change this color here to yellow and I can actually line this up go to arrange and send it all the way to the back so we can see that yellow shine through once again, you can tell that this is bigger than everything else uh, because that's the back layer. Now, you definitely don't have to have this layer. You can just use your paper trimmer, like I said, and cut it down to five by seven to save yourself some time loading and unloading. So really always recommend that. So once we are ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and hit make it. Now I'm using my Cricut Maker 3 today, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it we are using the mat. I'm gonna hit done and it's gonna load our colors. Now I wanna show you another trick. So if you wanna save, so for example, this is gonna take four mats, but I could actually narrow it down to two mats or even one mat if I was using a 12 by 24. So I already know that this color needs to be white, so what I can do is move it to another mat. I'm gonna click my three dots here, click move object, Click on the gray mat here, confirm. So it's gonna line it right on top, I'm just gonna scoot it over. So I know that this is white and I know that this is gray. So when I go to load these on my mat, I'm gonna go ahead and load them just like so. So I'm just keeping that in mind. Now for my next one, we do the same thing. So I'll come down to this purple one, three dots, move object to this purple mat here. I will scoot it over just like so. So now when we go to hit continue, we're gonna load that Cricut Maker. I'm gonna be able to, you're gonna see that we have two mats now. It went ahead and deleted the other two for me automatically. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and choose our materials. We're gonna to go to Browse All Materials. I'm gonna to start to type out card, and then you can choose the proper settings. So say, for example, if you were using you know, 65 pounds or 80 pound card stock, um, what I like to, I actually use 65, um, but the brand of cardstock I actually use. It's 65 pounds, but it cuts better on heavy cardstock. So always do your test cuts before you start your project because all paper is created differently. So you want to make sure that you are choosing your proper settings for what's going to work best for you. So now we are ready to go. Another thing I want to point out, say for example, I chose light cardstock, but I want to give it a little bit more pressure. You can also do that here by choosing more or less pressure right here as well. So you don't have to just go straight to heavy. I could choose light, but say more pressure. So, or once again, I could choose heavy and say a little bit lighter. All right, so now we're ready to go at this point. So as you can see, all we've got to do is load it. So let's go ahead and get ready to cut it out. All right, so now that I've showed you guys where to get your file, how to upload it into Cricut Design Space and size it out, we're ready to load it. So as you can see, we have our flashing load button. I'm gonna be using my blue mat today. So we need to go ahead and load our very first colors. So I need to trim these down to size. So we are cutting these to five by seven. So what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do here is cut them just a little bit over. So I'll probably do um, five and a half by seven and a half. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the very first colors we are doing is the white and the gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those in here really quick. So we're gonna go ahead and get our paper trimmer open and cut down our first piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a five and a half. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and do seven and a half, just like so. So I can go ahead and load this one on the left because I know that my white was over here on the left side of the map. All right, and then let's get ready for our gray here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna do five and a half. You can always go right down in the center, press down and go from left to right. And that really helps keep a smooth line as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do seven and a half. 
and we're going to go ahead and load this one on this side. All right, so now we are ready to load. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply load this in our machine. All right, so we are ready. You can see our go flashing, so we are going to go ahead and hit the go button. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this up while it cuts everything out. All right, so we are ready to unload our first mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of our way for a second. And the best way to do this is flip your mat upside down, remove this, and this is gonna prevent any sort of curling of your paper if you do this. So just like that, look at how gorgeous that is. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing with this one. We'll bend it over and get these pieces as well. All right, there we have it. Look at how nice and clean cut those are. So to get all of these pieces here, so if you have anything remaining, you could go ahead and just take your little scraper tool and remove those as well. All right, so you're just gonna take your little scraper tool like this and go forward. And it's really easy just to remove all the debris. All right, so let's go ahead and load our last two colors here. So we have the light purple on the right, just like so. And then we're going to have the darker purple on the left. And I'll leave some of the cardstock that I recommend down below. All right, so we're going to open this up again. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to load it. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready to load our next mat and cut out our last layers. So it's going to go ahead and bring it back in again. And then once that's flashing, we're going to hit go. So in the meantime, we can go ahead and line these up and you can see how gorgeous these are once again. Super, super nice. Now let's go ahead and hit go. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna speed this up once again and we'll be right back. All right, so we are ready to unload. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the unload button. And this was our last layer. So let's go ahead and get our Cricut out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and remove our last two pieces here. So once again, I'm flipping that mat upside down. I can kind of tap my paper a little bit too to remove anything that's remaining, but you guys can see how nice those cuts are and we are ready to get the next one. So same thing, I've got it peeled over and carefully going to remove this one as well. We'll go ahead and get this out of our way. All right, so now that we have our final layers here, you guys can see those here. So super, super nice cuts. Um, looks gorgeous. So we have this layer that's going to go on top of this layer and then these ones right here. Now, as you guys can hopefully see from the back side, whenever I was cutting our first layers, I went ahead and used my paper trimmer to cut this down to a five by seven. This is just going to be my very background layer because if not, we're going to have this piece here. You're going to see through right at the very back. So I'm going to have these colors just like, so look how gorgeous this is going to be. Now, if you were making a card, this would be gorgeous. You could literally take some double-sided adhesive and just glue these layers down. Your final layer, this could be a card. So you could do a yellow card base um, for that final layer. So you can turn these into cards. Super cute. Would be awesome for a little girl. You could also do these layers and puff these up as well and make it 3D for a card. So not just your shadow boxes, but you can make cards out of these as well. You can also do overlays. So we have done a video on creating your own overlays. We'll have it up above or down below for scrapbooking. So you could bring these layers in here too for scrapbooking as well. So lots of different things to do with these. So now that we have our layers ready to go, you're just gonna simply need some foam dots. You can have the squares, the dots. Um, you could have the strips that you have to cut down. You could double or triple these up to make it even higher if you need to. Um, and I've got a pack that came with a few different sizes here. I've got my five by seven shadow box. We'll have all of these things linked down below. Now I wanted to show you really quickly, these pieces here, since I brought my pieces to a five by seven, you could save all of these pieces here, which I have the purples as well. And you can, you know, use these with scrapbooking, create cards with them, um, layer these eight up to make another 3D type project so you can use the reverse pieces as well. So making those, you know, five and a half by seven and a half will give you that frame to use later in a card. So say for example, if I had a base here, 
I could throw these back on like so, and that would be gorgeous. So if I had a little bit of a bigger frame, um, lots of different things you can do with that. All right, so let's get ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start by opening up our shadow box here. So we're gonna go ahead and get these. You can usually find these pretty inexpensive. Um, so the very first thing that I actually wanna do is clean my glass. So let me go ahead and grab some paper towels and some Windex. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the inside really quick. You could definitely, you know, use whatever you want, but I definitely like to clean my glass before um, I go all the way through my project because sometimes these things, you know, they come to us a little bit dirty, not with fingerprints, but through the dust of the cutting of the wood and um, this, this particle stuff right here can kind of leave some debris as well. So then I could go ahead and get the front as well. There we go, make a nice, cause you know, you get your project together and then you find out that it's dirty on the inside. So the next thing that we want to do is this piece right here is going to be our back layer. So this is just gonna go right here. You could just use some double-sided adhesive. All right, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and go in with some of this Tombow glue. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. And also just a little tape runner. So I have my double-sided adhesive tape runner. Um, I can't find some of them and then some of them was dried out. So we're just gonna go ahead and use this, but I would highly recommend just using a double-sided um, adhesive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go around the edges here because I wanna make sure those are gonna stick down. Just like so, I love this. This is one of my absolute favorite glues of all times. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to adhere this to this side. This is the inside. So you have the outside of the frame, we have the inside of the frame. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth this out. You could do whatever color you wanted to. You could do a blue, um, you know, you could do black, whatever color you want. If you wanna do it a white color, um, just whatever you want your background to be. Okay, so next up, I wanna make sure I have this. If you had like a little hook, you would wanna make sure it was in the correct direction. We don't, so we're gonna go ahead and proceed forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and double check here because one thing I did not incorporate is the size of this frame. I almost measured this out and I totally wasn't thinking. So my problem is going to be, these are not going to want to set down in here. So I do highly recommend um, trimming these down just a little bit, which you could do right there inside of Cricut Design Space. So what I would actually do is take off probably a quarter of an inch all the way around. So um, that's what I'm actually just gonna do. Each one of these, it's only gonna take me just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and take off a quarter of an inch. So let me go ahead and I'll show you really quick and then we'll speed it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this lined up here like so, and I'm gonna just get it to that quarter of an inch. All right, so everything should line back up nicely. So we'll go ahead and just double check everything here. All right, looks good. Now, obviously I don't need to worry about this because this piece is five by seven, so it doesn't matter. So this piece can be five by seven, but these pieces need to be just a little bit smaller. So I took off a quarter of an inch, not on both sides, but total. So instead of doing five inches wide, it would actually be 5.75. And then for the bottom, since I took off a quarter and a quarter, it would be, 6.75 for that as well. So six or six point, sorry, 6.5 is what it would be. So it'd be 4.75 by 6.5 is what you would need. I'll have that link down in the description for you guys. So I always like to figure this out for you so that way you guys don't have to go through all of this because you can do this right inside of Cricut Design Space. But if you ever make this mistake and you forget to factor in this little bit of dimension here, you can always use your paper trimmer. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna layer it up just like so. So what you can do, one thing that I have found to be a little bit easier is A, you can just kind of center this up on here just like so. The only problem is, and layer up from here, is you're gonna run the risk of it kind of going back in. So you just wanna find that center. So what you can actually do here is start off with, I'm gonna start off with a foam dot in the exact middle. So I'll go ahead and just get me a foam dot here right in the center. Um, but the other thing that you could definitely do is you could lay your front layer down inside of your glass and you can work in this direction and then layer in your next piece. That way you know that it's gonna go down your glass and it's not stuck, it'll pop back out. So then you can finally pop it on here if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start from the back though. I've got one in the center here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and get my signs as well as the middle pieces. So, sorry, this is how I like to go all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue to pop these on this layer right here. So I really love these smaller ones. So for something like this, I actually would recommend just using your bigger ones. Um, just because it's such a big piece. But when you get to something that has intricate, you'd want to use these smaller ones. So now what we got to do is just pop the backs off of all of these here. Just like so. So just keep popping these off. These are super easy to work with. Um, there's, like I said, lots of different ones on the market. Um, ones that come in a strip where they're already, um, they don't have any adhesive on both sides it's in like this little roll form. And those are really nice because you don't have to sit here and pull all of these off. All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to line this up, making sure everything is in the correct direction. And I just want to make sure that I completely center this guy up. So paying attention to the top and the bottom. And then before I commit, I'll double check everything. And it looks like I need to go up just a smidge. So I'm going to move this out of our way here. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this down like so. Just double checking once again. I need to come over this way. All right, I think this looks good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and push everything down. I could double check myself here by popping this in before I get too, too carried away. And you wanna go face down, just like so. So you guys can see that's gonna line up nicely. So if I need to, I can adjust. And honestly, it looks like I needed to probably, since I took off a quarter of an inch total here, so what I would actually do is 5.75 by 6.75. I would not take off a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch because you guys can see that gap. So like I said, learn from my mistakes. So 5.75 by 6.75 and you guys are going to be golden. All right, so let's go ahead and keep on going. So we're going to go ahead and get our next layer here, which is going to be our lighter purple and it's going to go on here just like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these bigger pieces in the corner. So like I said, if you've got bigger pieces, you don't have anything real small and intricate, just go with your bigger pieces. So I'm going to just pop one here and you don't have to be perfect where you're getting them. You just want to make sure it's not going to collapse on itself. So I could get one here and here if I wanted to, just to give that extra support. And up here at the top, if I needed some right in here, I could go in with some smaller ones. So I'm going to go ahead and pop all of these backs off once again. I bet you we could probably take our little weeding tool, like your little pin pin with a needle, and pull these off even faster. But honestly, they don't take that much time. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom through here really quickly. Now we have a ton of these. Uh, we have ones that are square, so you would wanna do like an eight by eight shadow box and things like that. Now keep in mind with stuff that's really intricate like this, you really don't wanna go smaller in the design. So whatever the designer has designed for us, you really wanna stick with going bigger and not smaller. So you can definitely go as big as you want um, without distorting or being hard to cut because Cricut can only cut so small. So we always highly recommend to stick with what the designer has, um, you know, sized out for you or go bigger. So we're going to go ahead and just keep on layering. We've got two more layers here and they're not going to require as many foam dots. So they're obviously going a little bit quicker. So we've got one here, here. I'll go ahead and get all the way across the bottom here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just go in with one little guy here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get one here and here just to make sure that these pieces are gonna kind of pop up on us. And then I'll just get one small one here as well as here. I'm not gonna worry about going too big there. All right, so there we have it. So you guys let me know down below if you guys enjoy doing uh, paper crafts. What's your favorite? Is it scrapbooking? Do you enjoy making cards? These 3D projects, Mandela's? I really wanna know. So we really wanna make videos based upon things that you guys request. So this is one that's been highly requested. So we're trying to bring some 3D paper crafts for you. But if there is some paper crafts that you are hoping to see, definitely let us know down below so we can make it happen for you. So we are gonna go ahead and pop this little guy on. So I'm trying to be careful and I'm just pushing on those foam dots here so I don't tear anything up, but you guys can start to see the layers come to life there and see how gorgeous this is. So let's get our last layer on here. Now this would have been really, really pretty to do 
with like a glitter on top as well. Um, I always try to stick with, like I said, what the designers have for us. They're already super pretty colors. But if you wanted to go with, you know, some, say for example, some princesses, say for example, like the blues, um, you could do that as well. You could go with all of the blue colors to create your favorite characters. Um, would be really cool as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one here and here. I'm just gonna stick with these bigger pieces. And then we'll get a small one at the top and the bottom. So absolutely love it. Once again, you can see how intricate these cuts are. You can also use your silhouette to do this as well. But look at this grass. It's gorgeous. So you can use your silhouette, your Cricut. You could use the Cricut Explorer 2 if you wanted to. Whatever model machine you have, definitely feel free to use it. So once again, all of the supplies that I'm using today is linked down below. Now, another thing that you could do is you could take a font and you could put somebody's name with their birthday on it. You could do somebody's monogram for a little girl or just place their, their name and their birthday and things like that would be really cute for um, a little girl. Um, for our birthday, you could put a little cute quote on there as well. So you can definitely check out some um, princess quotes and do that as well. But look at how gorgeous this 3D layer is. It is so pretty. You guys can see all those layers. So just simply adding the one um, little foam dot. I'm not doubling those up or anything like that. You guys can see all of that dimension right there. It's gorgeous. Once again, this would be really pretty for a card to layer up a card. I wouldn't do this many layers for a card, obviously, but maybe the top two or three layers um, and then kind of get everything else down, but super, super gorgeous. So the very last thing you need to do is flip it upside down. Now we can tell that this is the top here or this is the top depending on your design. Now we do have 3D paper crafts like this that are designed horizontal instead of vertical as well. So we'll just make sure the tops are lined up and you just wanna go nice and center in there to get it to go straight down. We're gonna close these little guys here just like so, and there you have it. How gorgeous is this? So I really wish I would not have um, cut off too much. So once again, 5.75 by 6.75, and you guys are gonna be golden. I'll have that information down below just in case, um, but super, super easy to make, as you guys can see, it is gorgeous. Um, so I really hope you guys are gonna recreate this project. So like I said, adding somebody's name right down, even just like um, one of our little cursive script fonts right here, maybe to add like Allison, or you know, you could add the date on here. Maybe if you guys are going on a Disney trip or you went on a tri Disney trip, you guys could put the date down here for a couple. It would be super cute as well. Lots of different things that you could do with this little guy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.